Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 32 of Direwolf20's server play series. I've got some cool stuff to show you guys today. I built a pretty nifty thing between last episode and this one, but first I want to show you some of the changes that I made uh, between episodes here. Uh, number one, uh, we had uh, thermal expansion going on over here for the iron output, but it wasn't nearly enough uh, once we added iron to the actual uh, system here for uh, UU matter to iron conversion because uh, we started getting a little bit low on iron. Not low, but 60 stacks, so we were definitely like at a point where we didn't have enough for another HV, and we said, all right, let's go ahead and throw iron back into the mix. We've also got a lot of UU matter now. So uh, yeah, this system now with uh, Macerator at Overclocker with 10 and uh, some induction furnaces and the hopper here. The induction furnace doesn't quite keep up with the iron, but it's very close. So you really need to have a ton of iron going here. And then that gets output to uh, over here where it gets uh, turned into the refined iron. So this chest can accept uh, regular iron to turn into refined iron automatically, or you can just uh, UU matter it and it'll make its way to that chest eventually as, as regular iron. Then we added another MFSU here because the two macerators plus all the other stuff on this line wasn't enough, believe it or not, to uh, keep up with uh, the, the demands of uh, the power. We actually wound up using more than 512 EU per tick to run both these macerators with 10 overclockers in them, plus the extractor with a bunch of overclockers. It just got ridiculous. So we had to have another MFSU here to make things, uh, you know, behave a little bit more. And what else did we tweak? Well, let's go downstairs and see what's going on. So uh, I had a chest up there that I didn't show. It's a chest full of UU matter. Ta da! And that chest is being filled by, you guessed it, a golem. So why don't we uh, go down there and check that out. We have a lot of UU matter. Like, we, we pretty much filled this barrel up with UU matter, and then um, we decided all right, we should start using it. So, um, <laughs> you know, this nifty little guy just uh, keeps UU matter going. So uh, he will, uh, whenever UU matter comes out of this chest, he will refill it and go get more. Good job, Mr. Gollum. Ha, <laughs> that's so cool. Golems and barrels, I don't think there's a better combination. All right, now for my favorite part. I told you guys I would build a nifty little computer program for dealing with this stuff. Uh, and you can see there's a monitor there. I'm about to show you how that works. I'm very proud of it. It's actually very nifty. But first, I'm going to throw some, uh, you know, UU matter into the chest here and turn the sorting machine back on. Cool. Just so you can see, uh, you know, items getting uh, turned into the, uh, the iron gets made, and then it's pumped out and macerated, etc. Nice. So, Soren, you ready to show off this nifty creation that I made? Sure. Okay, here goes. The ultimate solar panel crafting machine version something point something. Whoa. Solar factory, please craft responsibly. So you should see here that I've got the ability to add solar panels, MV solar panels, and LV solar panels. I skipped the high voltage ones, because basically like you can do eight MVs if you want to do high voltage, and also there just wasn't room on the monitor. I could have made the monitor bigger, but whatever. So let me show you guys how this works. Uh, remember, you can only craft two at a time. That's the way I set up this sorting machine to pull out of this chest. So on purpose, two at a time is the crafting, right? So that's how that works. Now, now, what we can do in order to make solar panels is simply hit the plus sign here and you'll see that it has numbers next to it to tell you how many queued solar panels there are so it's queued it up so that there's two solar panels that are going to be made and you can see it's going to make two solars about a quarter of a uh, LV solar and uh, you know one thirty second of an MV solar. So as we add numbers here, it's going to keep adding up. And you'll see once I hit to the 8 and 16 here, so 16 is uh, a quarter of an MV solar and uh, two LV solars. Pretty nice, right? You can also bump it up by 8 at a time, and that just adds one to the LV solar. And then uh, if you subtract more than already exists, it'll just down to zero, and it won't hurt nothing. Cool. We can hit uh, plus 64, and that'll make 64 solars, 8 LVs, and 1 MV. And then once you're ready and you've uh, allocated everything you want, you just hit craft. Nice. And look, it's going. So basically what's happening is those turtles behind the scenes are grabbing the items. You can see here, that should be happening. There goes some tin, 
some tin and it's getting pulled out it's getting pulled out over here by the router and then uh, the router of course dumping it directly using the ejector module into the diamond chest and then it's crafting everything the way it should so uh, you know we originally saw how everything works now the other cool thing that I added to this is a uh, the the queued solars actually keeps track so every time um, it goes through the system of uh, you know pulling out the right amount of resources it subtracts two from that queued solars list not bad so you can see uh, you know once it's done this craft button will turn from green to red it means it's all done crafting everything well not necessarily done crafting it but done pulling the resources out and dumping them into the chest now of course the sorting machine has to throw everything in the direction of these uh, auto crafting blocks the fabricators but you know what it's got a little bit of time to do that not a big deal so we just made uh, a medium voltage solar array just throw all the resources at it and it should be perfectly even when this is done this chest should be totally empty and we shouldn't really have too many excess items in here not bad huh you can see here uh, we've got some lv solars coming up and then we've got uh we already have some mvs that i made earlier while I'm testing this hey Hello, here. and dire what's up i'm just showing off the you? um solar panel factory that i made between last episode and this one I did notice um, the beginnings of that at one point. Fancy, right? Very. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. Eight million dollars. Pretty fun. Yeah. I will teach transfer. Yeah, if you want to go get one, we have enough for another HV solar. Okay. I think we should put HV solars on the roof up here, maybe. But I don't know. <laughs> we were using so much power at this point, it's just comical. It, it really is. Oh, nice. Space. Exactly. And we did it all within one chunk, which I'm pretty pleased with. Oh, yeah. And what do you think, Neptune? Like How do you like it? Good. Not bad, right? I was just checking out Neptune's solar panel factory. It, I, I don't think we're the first ones to make one, Soren. Well, we might have been the first-ish, but we're definitely not, like, you know, the only ones. Uh, right. Chicken Bones has one, I believe, and now Neptune Pink is in the process of making one. So I was thinking maybe we'd stop by and see what you guys came up with. Chicken Bones isn't on at the moment, but maybe next time I catch him, we'll uh, go visit his solar panel factory. Though, um, I have to say ours is better because his UU Matter production completely lagged the server out. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't even his production, it was scrap production. Yeah, his scrap production. Did you see what he did, dude? It was awful. He used my monstrosity of uh, Yeah, but did you see how he was feeding the scrap into the recyclers? Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> dude, I think he had roughly, and this is not an exaggeration, about a thousand stacks of cobble flowing through pneumatic tubes at any given time. Yeah, he made and... an infinite buffer storage for an infinite supply. Yeah. Like, it literally just kept feeding into the pipes, and it never, you know, cleared out because the recyclers couldn't get anywhere near close enough to keep up. Oh, man, did it, like, <laughs> literally almost bring the server to its knees? I logged in, and the TPS, like, I did the slash TPS command, and it was, like, you know, 2 out of uh, 20. And I'm like, wait a second, 10%? <laughs> What's going on here? And Chicken Bones is like, oh, that might be me. He's like, I got this. Yeah. And, and then it took us like a good, you know, 20 minutes to mm -hmm. figure out how to clear that many items out of the pipe. I had to like cheat in, I think, about three or four extra dimensional barrels and just feed all the pneumatic tubes into them. Yeah, that was on TZ for chicken bouncers. Yeah. Can get cleared. It's like, oh. And then he's like, wait, I have an idea. And he like breaks a pneumatic tube. And literally, <laughs> like, my frame rate went to zero. And I'm just Ooh. like, what did you do? He's like, oh, I thought that would get rid of them. Um, no. <laughs> oh, man, was it bad. I was just like, chicken bones, I'm going to get you. Uh, we did clear out all the, you know, cobble that dropped on the ground, luckily. And that right. finally cleaned up my frame rate. It took us about half an hour to just delete all the cobble. But we got it. So yeah, be careful when building complex cobble systems. Make sure that you're not overloading things to the point where you've got like, you know, thousands and thousands of stacks of items into the in the pipes because if you do that, your server owners will yell at you a lot. Yeah, and if any of you yeah. are really good at making infinite storage buffers, realize that if you have an infinite supply, not a good idea. Yeah, when your supply is higher than your demand, that's usually when you have a problem. So yeah, that's our solar panel maker. On the market crashes.
Nice. <laughs> hey, look, we have a medium voltage solar. Yay. Yay. And we shouldn't have any extra resources, except, of course, the extra electronic circuits and copper cables and stuff that we usually have extra of, but that's not a big deal. Everything else, well done. So nice, smooth, even amounts. Everything is nice and kind of perfect-ish. I'm not too unhappy with it. The only other thing that I'm not going to show you guys, well, uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. do I want to show this? I could show it. It probably wouldn't hurt. Where are we at here? Do I have enough uh, inventory space? Okay. If you Basically, if you try to craft something and the resources aren't available, it'll give you an error message and pause in the middle. It's actually really nice. Uh, it'll just say, like, hey, you're out of whatever resources. So, like, if I cleared out the refined iron, like, as it was ticking down the cued solars, it would just stop and be like, hey, you're out of refined iron. Go put more in. And then you just have to right-click the monitor anywhere, and it will uh, resume where it was left off. So, nice. yeah, not bad. All right, so I think Soren and I want to build a nifty kind of base. Like, we've got our main base that has all our stuff, but Soren, remember you were looking for something to do with this room back here? Yeah. Yeah, this one, right? Mm hmm What if we made this the entrance to our, like, super secret base? That is perfectly fine to me. And I know, YouTube, your comments will be, oh, super secret, huh? You're putting it on YouTube for everyone to see. Well, yes, <laughs> I know, but... It'll be cool. Trust me. It's secret like, till I, I, I promise not to live stream it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dude, it's so dark in this room, by the way, Zoran. Like, yeah, so dark. it's more or less just make a zero light room, but we can change that. Okay. Yeah. How do you have it so dark with even like this window here with light coming in? I guess it's just eventually getting that, there. Yeah, it's that wide. Yeah. And is it because you used your blocks that we don't get mobs spawning in here? Correct. So all your blocks here don't spawn mobs? Any block that glows or has this animation will not spawn mobs. Okay, well That's these blocks, the rule they definitely have a little bit of glowing animation. That's uh -huh. cool. I like it. All right, so what do you say we start working on our secret base? Now, we've got a couple ideas, and uh, we've got a couple other things that are just kind of going to go, you know, we're going to go with it. So this isn't going to be one of those, like, you know, terribly functional builds. I'm going to try and go for something that looks cool. So we're going to build, like, a really neat base, but we're also going to have a whole bunch of cool functional stuff, like, you know, frame doors and, uh, you know, MFFS security, and we're going to have, like, you know, computer interaction. So there's going to be a few things we want to do. Uh, it won't be, like, a whole lot of coding or anything, but it will be be pretty neat we're gonna go with uh you know try and do as much cool stuff as we can and i think it'll look neat in the end so we're gonna have like a kind of like a secret base and maybe a couple other like neat powerful items in there by the way is this your order world soren yep so what are you doing here aside from making Just... a very dark place that will probably spawn enemies somehow nope it's a mushroom biome nice i like the uh blue and green um you know stars yeah. that looks pretty good yeah, oh, so X yeah, colored stars is a cool thing. So is this where you've moved all of our um, scrap production, by the way? Nope. Oh, it's just where you moved uh, sand to glass, I guess, and smooth stone? This would basically be anything that cobblestone can give you for free. Why do you have so many of these, though? Like, wouldn't, like, three of them suffice? I'm an overachiever, and I don't know. Yeah, you don't know any better. <laughs> And could you right-click that chest with the diamond thunder with it, so you can link it to the UU matter? Oh. Uh, don't kill all the UU matter now. Like, we really only want no, no. overflow coming here because we want our main base to still be supplied by the golem, right? Unless you move yep. the golem here. So, you know. And you've got a cake maker over here? Indeed. Uh, Chicken Bones won speed upgrade for his router, so... So you built three tanks of milk. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's four, you just don't see four. Really? <laughs> four tanks of milk? <laughs> Why four? <sighs> okay, like, so... you, you made a little bit of sense when you're like, oh yeah, I got three tanks because I needed three buckets of milk, which is silly, but... but now yeah, you're I like, made this anymore. main one that you see. Because I needed milk. Then I realized the recipe needed three buckets. So I was like, okay, just place it there and there. This fabricator needs this wheat and sugar, so I may move this so it only uses the three tanks. But there's a tank under these. You're so crazy. 
<laughs> yes, he is. Also, did you know your tanks are totally broken right now? Really? Yeah. Like, you didn't know that? No. Oh, well, come, come to the overworld. Overworld? Yeah, I'm gonna show this to, uh, well, I guess I could show it to you on camera. Yeah, I mean, come to the I B room. Actually, I don't know if I want to do this with my B room. Let's try, uh, let's just try and, like, do you have any valves handy? I have 40 of them, yes. Okay, so you do have some valves handy. Yeah, make a tank. Do we need glass in them? No, shouldn't. Okay. Okay. Now we make the tank. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can produce <laughs> it. It was happening to me. Was it making your armor go funky? Yes. I have no idea what that is, but I, as we were first reported when we first got on the server, and no one else had that problem. It happened to me every single time today that I was trying to do this. I've had someone with uh, out in the wild report it to me today, too. I don't know what's causing that either, but it's not in dev. I know that. There's some kind of combination of things. I got an idea. Let's let's do this with my. Sadly, it was happening on this multi tank in the B room with the liquid DNA. So let's see if it happens here. You want to come here and check this out? Sure. All right, come to the B room. Sure. All right. I was breaking this block. Okay. All right, reform the tank. Uh, okay. Did it happen to you? Yep. Also, this thing over here is weird looking. I don't know if this looks weird to you, but like I'm seeing through the floor here. Right, right under your feet, I can see through the floor. Yeah. Now I now now a block update fixed it. Okay, that should be fixed in the next build. Okay. But I don't know why it causes the armor. Which here. Yeah, did you or see I, that? It's, yeah. It, it's just, weird, right? <laughs> also, it doesn't reform the tank properly. Let me try something. Nope. Look at my armor. I've got wooden transport pipes for leggings and cobblestone transport pipes for feet. <laughs> <laughs> this is my inventory all of a sudden. Like, that's what know, happens I, when you right-click on his valve blocks to form the, the tank thing. And Chicken Bones and I can't figure out what's going on. Um, run. All right, I'm back. I had to relog. As soon as you relog, everything's fine. But... Until like, you try to reform the tank. It's Yeah, well, I've, I've found a semi-solution. If you remove a valve and replace it, like, sometimes it works. I got a better idea. And I'm valve. wondering it's be, if it's if it's it doesn't seem to happen when it's a new tank, right? So maybe it's because the valves already have data in them somehow. Like the new tank, it didn't happen with at all, but that didn't have any liquid in it already. Anyway, YouTube, we're gonna troubleshoot and then we're gonna come back and build fun things. But you know, troubleshoot after build later. Back off camera. See you soon. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. Uh, Soren, uh, I think we tracked down the source of that bug. It was actually related to the uh, wrath lamps that were hanging out in there. But I figured um, I wanted to show you guys what was involved behind the scenes on this nifty little program that's here. So why don't I go through it real quick on camera here, just so you guys know how it works, and then I'm going to paste spin it for you because I know you guys love to have my paste bins. So... Here goes nothing. Um, I actually made a little bit of a change in the way this uh, whole system works. Um, I've got my button uh, program that you guys have seen me use in the past, and I've put it up there. I've actually turned it into what's called an API. And what that means is I can load up this API and the, uh, all the functions and all the stuff in here will be available in other programs. It's really pretty neat. It's almost identical, except the button, the, the, it's all functions, basically. So there's no actual commands inside this program. It's just all functions that do stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste bin this for you guys right now. But basically the same stuff that was there before, the setting of the table, uh, the function name, the filling of the table, that kind of thing. And then uh, we've got the fill command, uh, all that stuff that uh, you know worked before. Screen, to refresh the screen and all the buttons on it. I actually added a function called toggle button, uh, and you just 
pass the name of the button and it turns it from green to red or red to green so it's just a separate one and then a uh, flash which uh you know flashes the button it has about a, a 0.15 second delay uh which is how i got it to flash green very briefly when you click on a button and then go right back to red so those are just a couple of the functions that were added and then of course uh you know all the other ones that were there before added a label uh function here that just uh adds a label to the screen so you can just you know pass it real quick and simple uh the the x and y position of the, or the or the w and h position if you will and then the text that's involved. So really simple, uh, well, probably not really simple, but pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and paste bin put button just so you guys have that API. And now you can go ahead and use that whenever you want. Then we can check out Solar Factory. So this is the one that has all the stuff. So you can see the very first thing I do is load up the API called button. First thing, done. All right, so once I've done that, now I can use that button API by simply doing button and then dot and the name of the function. So for example, I showed you guys that flash button. Uh, that flash function inside the button API is called simply by doing button.flash. Pretty simple, right? So uh, the way this works is very similar to how you call like turtle functions, right? Like you do turtle.forward and that calls the forward command inside the turtle API. Well, I built my own little API called button. And then when I do button.flash, it flashes the button. Specifically in this case, it was flashing button plus two. Got it? Okay, and then, uh, you know, down here, we've got uh, the function called minus two, and uh, this one's actually checking to see if, uh, you know, the to-do function is, uh, you know, more or less than a certain number. This way, uh, the code there, that if then, is basically making it so that when, uh, you know, if it's at like 32 and I hit minus 64, it doesn't go to minus 32. It just says, hey, if it's less than 64, you know, go ahead and make it zero, you know just so you don't have to worry about that. I did have button coding in here for 512, I just never actually added it. Um, and then, uh, you know, we've got the uh, printing of the to-do, and uh, what we got here is we uh, do the uh, the queued solars thing, so that uh, prints out how many solars are left to go. So a bunch of cool program stuff in here. Thought you guys might like to take a quick look at it. For the most part, it's, uh, you know, pretty much the same way it was before. Here's that error screen. Basically, it's going to, uh, you know, go ahead and clear the screen, set out a text message saying what it's short on, and then uh, tells you to click once refilled, and then it just waits for a click. Uh, that wait click is a quick function I wrote. Cool. So thought you guys might like to see the code behind this. I know uh, you would want the paste bin, so I'm going to go ahead and paste bin put solar factory. Cool. Uh, so there you go, guys. Now you have both those programs to go ahead and download, play around with. Uh, thought you might like them. Nice. So, uh, oh yeah, the other thing we want to do is make sure to restart this computer so the monitor is functional again. Got it? Nice. All right. So, Soren, you still hanging out with us? Yep. Cool. I was just explaining how, the, how my uh, program works there. Nice. Yeah. So we want to build like a little secret layer base type thing, right? Where do we want to put that? I'm thinking we want the entrance to be up here in this nifty little place that you built. This crazy, dark, scary room. Yeah. So what I'd like to see is like multiple levels of authentication to get through. So there might be like, you know, a couple different places where you have to do different things to get past and into the next door. So like a multi-door system, like one door would be open with frames and another door could be a force field and another door could be whatever, right? Does that sound like a pretty cool plan? So far, yeah. I like how dark it is in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dark in this room and what's weird is that you have light blocks but it's also like dark still so like they glow uh -huh. but they're not giving off light which is kind of a trippy effect and i like it a lot <laughs> I like it really. so yeah i think what we want to do like maybe we want to have like a hidden button or something along those lines to get past the first door right and maybe yeah. like Maybe like frames or something to open it. What would be really cool is if we had like a really bright wrath lamp right behind it. So like as soon as you start opening that door, it just floods this entire room with light, right? Oh, that would be cool, right? Mhm. Mm so that's what I'm I'm thinking along those lines. So why don't we start making some frames and stuff and see what we can come up with? So this will probably be like a multi-episode build, but I want to just build like a really cool layer. And like, obviously I'm terrible at making things look nice. So that's why I've got Soren here helping me out because <laughs> he's got a little bit more aesthetic talent than I do. Like I'll build the functional stuff, like the frame door and all that coolness, but I'm going to uh, leave it up to you to, to make it look nice. Deal? Okay. So now do we have your new blocks yet, by the way? Uh, we do not. 
What? We'll probably have them you later said today. Friday. Yes, but I didn't plan on taking a 19 hour nap. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Soren has new blocks that I think is, are going to be really cool and we're going to use as part of this build. So just stay tuned for that. It's probably going to have to wait till the next episode or two before we get our hands on them. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes once I've built a couple things for you guys. All right, guys, we're back. So uh, what we're going to do is I just realized we actually, like, real quick got, like, cleaned up on this episode. So, uh, like, we need to wrap this up kind of soonish. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of lay out, like, our first area that we want to go into so what i'm thinking here soren is like let's just build like a three by three tunnel right like just this deep it doesn't have to be too deep and what i want to have is oh someone labeling all this oh what's up cbw oh we got a lot of people on now don't we? we got pahimar we got cbw we got neptune we got all the stars hello pahimar how's your new uh let's mod series doing by the way Pretty good. Got three videos out today. I only plan two. Nice. <laughs> well then, you're already ahead of the game. Kind of gets addicting, doesn't it? It's like, I want to record, and then you're like, I have a lot of recorded stuff. That, and it's keeping me away from wedding shows on a Friday night, so. Oh yeah. See, <laughs> nice. that's, that's, that's the trick, right? Like, you don't want to have to go to them. So what I'm thinking, Soren, is like maybe we slide apart these doors and we've got a cool frame thing. I just came up with this neat frame design that we're going to build next episode. But we're going to slide apart this like three by three area here. It's going to look really neat. And then, uh, you know, players will be allowed to walk in here and they'll have access to like step two of like the design. Right. And step two will like lead up to this point. So like in here is where you'll be in a room like this size and you have to solve the first puzzle type of deal. I don't know if it's really going to be a puzzle or like an access thing, like, you know, maybe something along those lines. And then once you get past this one and you get past this security door, you know, then what you'll do is you'll, you'll move on through and you'll have another security area. Like we'll have like a two or three stage security system. And then once you get to like your third stage and you, you pass it, then you'll be allowed into the secret base. Does that sound cool? Nice. Not bad, right? I'm thinking we could have some fun with that. Yeah, it did. Thank you, Neptune. So let's. Does that sound like a good plan, Sora? Like we'll have to, we'll have to, mm -hmm. like you know, make sure we have the same number of blocks in between each area. I think we already right. do, don't we? Look at that four, four, and four. That was a mistake, <laughs> but I'm happy. So yeah, that's what we'll do. And then like each area will have a different security measure to allow you through. And then once you're allowed into the base, then there's going to be some cool building going on in there. We have a neat idea for like a lighting system. We're going to use Soren's new blocks as a lighting system. So he's got some new blocks coming up. I guess they're not on the server yet, even though I saw we updated mod Soren and I'm still not seeing Psycraft updated. Just saying. I noticed you're running around and not talking now. <laughs> i know nothing yeah uh obviously so <laughs> all right guys we'll be back in just a minute i want to kind of plan out how i want the first door to work here before we wrap up the episode um and then we'll be back to show that off and uh hopefully it'll come out pretty good so i think we're gonna need to dig back into the wall here and we're gonna need a bunch of frame stuff because i definitely want the first door to be a frame door like after that it can be whatever but door number one frame all right, back in a few. All right, guys, obviously making a few frame motors because I said I want this thing to work on frames. So that's going to be pretty neat. Also want to get a couple of Soren's nifty looking blocks. I think dark Zycordite for now. Might go with the dark Zycordite brick, but we'll see uh, what we decide to do. So here's where my door is going to be, right? Kind of, sort of. So let's put the door down like so. Uh, well, let's come back to the door in a minute. I want to kind of build up this area. So what I'm thinking is, like, long story short, we're going to want this. And we're going to want some covers here. And then we're going to want this guy to be probably right here. Because, like, inside this wall, we're going to want to have the corridor go down like this, right? 
So let's do the frame motors here. Now you might be saying, like, why are you putting them there, Dyer? Don't worry, this is going to be neat. And you're probably going to have to wait till next episode to see where I'm going with this. But you should figure it out if you're paying close attention and see what I'm doing. And you'll be like, oh, you're right, that is cool. Because it is, trust <laughs> me. All right, and then we want these guys. That should do, I think. And let's just say, for a little spoiler hint as to how this is going to work, I'm going to do this. That ought to do. I think. We'll find out if it does or not. Uh, oh, you know what I need, Soren, is a... Uh, you know what? I think I can get one. Hang on. Oh, we're already missing a battery box. Where'd it go? Uh, check my random chest there. Your random chest. Oh, one of your many? No, not the one that you saw <laughs> earlier. I'm oh, cleaning up the go. rest. Oh, I'm sure you did. Because you're oh so tidy. <laughs> I'm going to let this all drain into here, and then we're going to see this thing in action. So... Let's see if I can make this really work. Now the uh, tricky part with this is we actually need to go like really far beyond the wall here. So what we need is to clear out like as far back as here. So let me go find my way to this. There it is, cool. I am probably gonna need more frames than I have. Just because I don't have any... Well, maybe I have some frames. Hang on. And we're getting close to the wrapping up here, guys. But we gotta... I want to finish this before I do that. I can use redstone tube frames. That's fine. Now, this is definitely, like, temporary-ish. But it should work. Ish. So if I set this up right, we're about to find out how well I did. Here goes nothing. One. Okay, you don't want to move. Why don't you want to move? Hang on, be right back. All right, so I'm back. Let's uh, wrap up this episode with me demonstrating how I hope this will work. So imagine this is the door part, right? And that's what we want to open, all right? So part one of this build is as follows. One, two, three. What's part two going to be? Well, you're going to have to wait till next episode. But ideally, that should work out pretty well. So for now, Direwolf20 is going to wrap up this episode of the Let's Play series. So let's get ready to wrap up, guys. All right, so Direwolf20 wrapping up episode 32. Hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. Soren waves goodbye. I am going to uh, get myself a couple more frame motors and some more frames and do a little bit more fun stuff, and then we'll come back next episode and finish up the first stage of this door. Meanwhile, I'm going to make Soren do all the work of uh, clearing out the... Uh, the, the um, you know, rest of the area. So we want to have like a nice, clean, open area. Actually, I think this might, actually, I want to keep this this way. 
That'll work. That way it'll not, you know, allow me to go any further. That should stop me. And then uh, to close the door is really cool. It'll be just like this. One, two, and three. So Soren will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get him to clear out a nice terrain. And we're going to build like a nice, cool secret base back here. We have some cool ideas. You know, think back to kind of like my volcano bases in the past, but not the same. We want to like come up with some neat ideas and some good looking stuff. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. Like I said, come back next time and we'll have that awesome uh, door ready to be finished and then move on to uh, more security systems to, uh, you know, get people through and into the secret base. All right, guys, take it easy.